Have you ever wanted a line that goes from one part to another? This is effectively what beams are. So for example, if I were to click on this part and I were to drag it around, as you can see, the beam will always connect from this point to this point. And like it, it curves because I changed some of its uh, properties to curve. Uh, but then for example, if I were to delete this beam that I have, and then I were to add a completely new beam, and I were to set its attachment one to this part's attachment and attachment, I mean, attachment zero to this attachment and attachment one to this attachment, then as you can see, this is what we get. Just a flat straight line that goes from this attachment to this attachment. So I'm gonna, you know, just delete these parts and hopefully you have this like blank base plate open. So what I'll do is, I know I just deleted them, but I'll create two new parts like so, you know, just position them like somewhere here. And then I will add, it doesn't like, you don't have to add the beam like inside a part. It can be anywhere, but like, I mean like anywhere in the workspace, right? Um, but I'll just add the beam inside of this part. Cause why not? Um, if we look here, the beam needs attachment zero and attachment one. So unlike a weld constraint, right? So if, if we look at like a weld constraint, weld constraints need parts, right? So I could just click on this and just click part and, you know, do this click part. And then it works, right? So it well, so all weld constraints need, for example, are just parts. However, beams are different because they need attachments. So if I were to click on the part, it doesn't work because this part isn't an attachment. Um, and so the way you add an attachment to a part is you just click add attachment. And by default, it's always going to position itself to the middle of the part. And whenever the part moves, the, like the attachment will move along with it, right? And then I'll add an attachment here as well and you can you can you can actually move this attachment so if i click on the attachment i can like move it up here right or like you know somewhere here or i could move it like over over here if i wanted to let's just move it up why not just for example you, you don't have to change your attachment i'm just showing you this as an example so we have one attachment that's inside the part and the other attachment which is above this part right um and then if i go to the beam and i say okay attachment zero will be this attachment and attachment one is this attachment. Now, as you can see, it's going from this attachment to this attachment. So this is why like beams use attachments and not parts because like, we, like, like what if you wanted the beam instead of going to the middle of the part, you wanted it to go to the, like this side, for example, right? And, and, and you could do that. So I could just, you know, take this and I could just move it here, right? So an attachment is like a precise point inside of a part or outside of a part, right? So I could, it doesn't have to be inside of the party. It could be just here. I could just have an attachment like over here, right? And then if I move the part, then, you know, the attachment moves along with the, it's a, it's a bit confusing, right? Um, but then if I were to, you know, change the position back to zero, 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 it goes back inside the part and then we have our beam, right? So this is, we're effectively done with actually like adding the beam. But then if you wanted to look at some properties, you know, you can change the color um, like so. And I believe you can also make this a gradient. Yeah, you can. So can, I can do something like this, right? So you can make your beam into a gradient, right? Which this looks kind of bad. Um, let me let me see let me see what I can do. Um, I quite like this. Oh yeah, that's actually quite nice. Um, yeah, so you know you can change the color. You can make it a gradient. Enabled, you know, obviously. Uh, light emission. Yeah, like just how bright it is. Light influence. I believe how like. Like if there's a light inside of your game, like how much influence does the light have on uh, this beam, right? Texture, like if you have like a custom texture for beams, so let's say you wanted this to be like like a, like a flow, like some flowing water, right? Because like textures can be animated, so th this beam could be like like flowing water, or it could be like arrows, you know, like some tycoon games, like like you have arrows from the player to like the button that you want to press. That's how they do it, right? So they make a beam. They attach it to the player and then to the button, and then they change the texture to be these like arrows, which are pointing forward, right? Uh, texture length. I mean, yeah, that's only if you have a texture texture mode. Yeah. Only if you have a texture texture speed again, like how fast the texture is, if it's animated transparency, you know, fairly, fairly obvious. Um, I think this means like how transparent it is on this side and not on this side. Yeah. So if I, if I were, were like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So that's actually pretty cool. So yeah, like, so as you can see, like, as I drag it along, it changes the transparency on the beam. So if I wanted to, I could make the beam almost, like, disconnect in the middle, which actually does look quite nice. 
And then we have Z offset, which, um, yeah, so it, 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 just, it just offsets the beam on the Z axis, I think. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, so it just kind of moves it on the Z. I'm not too sure why you would ever use this, but, I mean, you have it. People in the comments can, you know, explain what this does. Um, and yeah, we have attachment, attachment zero, attachment one, curve zero. So how much it curves from attachment zero, like this, right? Or like this. So here it's it's on this attachment, right? And here it's on the other attachment. So you could have something like this. And then as you move it, it like it remembers the curve. Um, yeah, beam, let's see. Whether it faces the camera or not. So like the so like if it faces the camera, then the beam will always be like the same width and the same length, right? Because it's facing the camera. But if it's not facing the camera, it's gonna be like an actual free three D object. This is why if I look at it from like the top, it's gonna look thin, right? But if I look at it from here, it's not thin because like it's not facing the camera. But if it is facing the camera, then I will see it as the same like you know width, width every time. Then we have segments. Let's see. Yeah, so just like how much kind of lines the beam has so if i do 100 it's gonna be very like very smooth if i do three yeah as like it's more blocky right because it has one two three segments but if i do 100 then it has like a like a hundred of these like small lines which you can't see and they're so small and they make this, this like nice looking curve right i'll do actually i i do quite like how this looks it looks quite nice um and then you have width zero and width one. And this is basically like, okay, on the on the attachment zero, how wide is it gonna be, right? So I could do 0 0.1. And so now as you can see, it's not, not too wide at all. And over here I could do 10. And we have this, right? And so if I wanted to, I could like scale this part to be like really big, like this, right? And you know this is this is it. So we've basically just made ourselves a beam, uh, which yeah yeah just a beam instance. I'll make it not face the camera because it does look kind of weird when you like move around. But like this does look kind of pretty nice, right? Like yeah, like look at that. How cool is that? This like part and it's like kind of going like directly on this thing. That's very cool. So yeah, that's the power of beam constraints. Um, I guess for a challenge. I want you to like, you know, just have like a, a regular part in, in the workspace. And then inside of a script, whenever a new player joins the game, you create a um, like, you, okay, yeah. So like make sure the part has an attachment, right? Like off the bat. And then when a player joins the game, um, you add an attachment to the player's head. And then you add a weld, con I mean, not a weld, you add the beam inside of this part. So yeah, yeah, actually no, yeah. So just have this part with an attachment and a beam and have the attachment zero equal to this attachment. And then whenever a player joins the game, set this beam, uh, like the attachment one, to be the attachment on the player's head. So, you know, that's that's your little challenge for this tutorial. Um, I know I didn't explain it that well, but I mean, you know, what do you expect? It's a tutorial about a, a beam, right? You know, there's not a lot of things to talk about here. So I'll delete that, you know, good luck. Uh, join my server, you know, share your progress on the challenge and just your overall, you know, Roblox development. And thank you for watching.